today we're going to be talking about the peripheral nervous system, which oftentimes is abbreviated PNS. It includes all of the nerves that are not part of our central nervous system, which if you remember from before, included our brain and our spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system has two divisions, the sensory and the motor divisions. The sensory division is exactly what it sounds like. It comes from your senses. So we're getting signals in from our sense organs. We hear, we taste, we see, we smell, we touch things. Our motor division is going to then send signals out to various muscles and glands in order to have some sort of effect. So we call those muscles and glands effectors. When we talk about the pathways that the signals take, if we have a signal that comes in from one of our sense organs, let's say we hear a particular sound, it's going to send a signal through the sensory neurons, which is then going to send a signal to the spinal cord and up to the brain to be processed through special neurons called interneurons. Once the brain processes that information, you hear a sound, it's going to send the signal to the motor neurons and then back out to the effectors, which are our muscles or glands. So if I hear a sound, I may turn my head to a particular direction based on that sound that I hear. This particular pathway that's shown, where it's sending the signal all the way to the brain for processing, is used for a stimulus that's under conscious control. For example, even wiggling my toes. I'm under conscious control of that one, and maybe my toes are getting wiggled because they're being tickled. Um, it could be that there's something that's cold um, or something that maybe my toes are sensing that has a different texture to it. These aren't things that are for emergencies though. The next pathway that is an option for signals to take is a reflex pathway. These are things that are for things that we typically do not have conscious control of. Reflexes are used in an emergency kind of situation typically. So the way a reflex pathway would work is that we would have a sense organ that would sense something. Let's say I put my hand on a hot stove and that sense organ would sense that heat and send a signal through the sensory neuron and instead of sending it through the interneurons from the spinal cord all the way to the brain, it would actually have a pathway from the spinal cord directly back to the motor neurons to my effectors to move my hand away. This is a big step here that we're not sending the signal to the brain. It doesn't need to go to the brain for processing. So this signal can be incredibly fast, a very rapid response because there's no processing in the brain. And this is for safety, life-saving kind of events. Um, luckily enough, when I touch my hand to a hot stove, I don't have to get that signal from my brain, ooh, it's hot, let's take our hand off my body will basically automatically do it for me, a reflex. These things also, if you think of, do not need to be learned because they're almost an automatic kind of thing. When someone throws a ball towards your face and you blink, you don't have to think about the fact that you're blinking and no one ever has to teach you that you're blinking. That's our reflex pathway. What I'd like you to do is I would like you to practice sketching the pathway to show, for an example, grasping a pencil and actually holding on to that pencil. And then sketch the pathway to show the path to move your hand off a hot stove. <laughs> 